What is the spirit of your obedience to laws and faithfulness to the traditions you inherited? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. I used to hear Mass at the Notre Dame Cathedral in Ho Chi Minh City when I was stationed in Vietnam for my company many years ago. I found the Holy Mass experience akin to what I have been accustomed to. During one of my vacations, though, I had a peculiar experience. As I traveled to my destination in the most southern part of Vietnam, I was amazed at the number of Catholic churches that dotted the long road I traveled. As it was a Sunday, I looked for a Catholic church that celebrated Mass in that distant part of communist Vietnam. I found one, and upon entering it, I found everything to be normal, including the altar, the images of the Blessed Mother and Sacred Heart, and everything one should see inside a Catholic church. As I waited for the priest to enter, I observed that all women were seated on the right side and all the men were on the left side of the center aisle. I was on the wrong side of the aisle, I thought, but I couldn't change pews anymore because the priest suddenly entered with two sacristans. I was shocked to see him holding smoking sticks of incense and bowing in front of the altar with raised incense before depositing them on a vase at the foot of the altar table. He then proceeded to celebrate Mass. Initially, I thought I entered the wrong church, thinking that perhaps it was a Buddhist church. I was glad I stayed on to see, understand, and appreciate the enculturation of the Catholic faith with the traditions of old Vietnam. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus declares his respect for his own Jewish tradition, assuring people, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish but to fulfill. For many of the Jews who became his followers and established the Christian church, it was not easy for them to give up their traditions. Some of these traditions embedded into law can be considered strange to many Christians today, such as strict prohibitions on the kinds of food to eat, the flogging and stoning of women who commit adultery, the requirement of circumcision to be admitted to the church as a member, and so on and so forth. It might be confusing for Jesus to utter such words of obedience to laws when he himself was considered a frequent violator. He sort of worked on the Sabbath by healing the sick. He allowed his apostles to pick grain on the field they passed to feed their hunger, considered as work on Sabbath, and he ate without washing his hands on one occasion. We need to understand, though, that Jesus was not out to violate laws and traditions, but to make people understand that there is a far more important law that should govern their life. It is said that during a service at an old synagogue in Eastern Europe, when the Shema prayer was said, half the congregants stood up and half remained sitting. The half that was seated started yelling at those standing to sit down, and the one standing yelled at the one sitting to stand up. The rabbi, learned as he was in the Torah and Talmud, didn't know what to do. His congregation suggested that he consult a housebound 98-year-old man who was one of the original founders of their congregation. The rabbi hoped the elderly man would be able to tell him what the actual tradition was. So he went to the nursing home with a representative of each faction of the congregation. The one whose followers stood during Shema said to the old man, Is it our tradition to stand during this prayer? The old man answered, No, that is not our tradition. The one whose followers sat asked, Is it our tradition to sit during Shema? The old man answered, No, that is not our tradition. Then the rabbi said to the old man, The congregants fight all the time yelling at each other about whether they should sit or stand. The old man interrupted, exclaiming, That is our tradition. We may be sticklers for rules, a staunch defender of traditions, and this is just right and proper, brothers and sisters, for rules are there to put order and traditions are to be kept because they speak of the richness of our cultures. There is always good in everything of the past that has become part of our present. But we should not ignore the law that Jesus teaches us today, the law that encompasses all laws, the law that brings all traditions to their rich conclusion and makes all laws meaningful for our lives. That is, the law of love, love for God and neighbor. Laws and traditions can only be justified if there is order, if love is that which puts order in our lives. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Heavenly Father, let my love for you and for people be the spirit that rules my attitude and perspectives for all the laws and traditions I observe. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.